Hello friends. In this lecture, we are going to start a new module in ANSYS Workbench that is Transient Analysis. So till now, we had learned about Static Structural Analysis and Nonlinear Analysis. Now, the basic difference between Static Structural or Transient Structural Analysis is the load with respect to time. In case of static structural, when we perform the static structural analysis, we consider that the load or the force does not change with time. So we assume a constant value of force. But when we consider the transient analysis, so this is for transient structural analysis. In this type of problem, the force depend on time. So the force can vary like this. So we can take multiple forces. It can go any curve. So the force can change like this. This is called transient analysis. Now, first of all, let's understand some mathematics of transient analysis. So the basic governing equation in case of transient analysis is given by mx double dot plus kx plus cx equal to force. Here this force is a function of time. So here we can write it as ft. So mx double dot we know we call it as a spring force. Spring force is basically this kx and this force is called the inertia force. Inertia force. So we have combination of inertia force and then spring force and the third force is force due to damping. This is called damping. So in case of transient analysis, this is the governing equation and the software works onto this equation and this Ft is the external applied load and this is always a function of T that is time. Now let's solve a problem of transient analysis in ANSYS workbench. Consider we have this crankshaft. As we know the crankshaft is used in the automobile engines. This crankshaft on the one side it is connected to the flywheel. Here it is going it is connected to flywheel. Here it is going to connect to the input shaft. Here on the top side it is connected to called that is called connecting rod or we can say con rod and the force is applied onto the top surface of this crankshaft and due to this force the crankshaft rotates and because of this rotation the rotation motion is produced in the automobile engines. So here we are going to consider this pressure that is applied here. Also we will consider the load due to the inertia of this crankshaft that is its mass. So we are going to apply this g value here g that is acceleration due to gravity. We know the value of g is 9.81 meter per second square. So we will also insert this value of this gravitational force. So before going into the depth of this problem in ANSYS, first let's understand what is this graph and why it is important. So this is the graph between cylinder pressure and the crank angle. So basically this crank angle is the rotation of this crankshaft. So this crankshaft is going to rotate like this. Okay, we can consider this clockwise or anti-clockwise. So here this is the crank angle on the horizontal side we have this angle theta on the vertical side we have this pressure that is in bar and this thing actually happens in a petrol engine car or a diesel engine car anything so initially the pressure is less after that there is going to be compression and then here we can see a peak of pressure it is basically called the sparking. So due to the spark plug 
sparking is produced in the engine and there is a burning of fuel that is petrol and a higher amount of pressure is generated due to that due to that burning of petrol the crankshaft start to rotate and engine starts working and we need to check whether this crankshaft will break or not at this maximum load so hence we are going to apply a variable load we can see the pressure is not variable but instead it is changing with time so experimentally when we calculate this value of crank angle so this is crank angle 0 90 degree 180 degree 270 and then that is a time so 0 0.1 0 0.05 this is in second the pressure is in bar here and the pressure is in megapascal so now let's solve this problem in ANSYS so we are going to consider this problem in the next lecture hello friends in this lecture we are going to solve the transient analysis of this crankshaft so we had already discussed this problem in the previous lecture and now let's solve this problem go to ANSYS workbench here first of all we will have to go to this transient structure pick and drag this after that in the similar way we need to define the engineering material and right now we are taking the structural steel as default material so we can change this material according to our requirement after that i will go to geometry and then go to design modeler now go to file and then import the geometry go to the folder of transient analysis and you will find the file that is crankshaft click open and then click on generate now we can see the crankshaft uncheck on this and now i will go to close and then let's apply all the load and boundary condition to this so go to model and then edit this so here I will go to this transient inside this we can go to this analysis settings so in this analysis setting we need to change the number of steps so right now number of step is one but we need to change the number of steps according to this pressure value so the pressure is applied at nine points so two four six eight nine it means we need to apply the eight eight steps so the number of step is 8 now we need to insert the time for this for the current step 1 the end time will be this is 0 0.15 so insert the value 0 0.015 similarly for the second time step so we just have to insert these values i will click on this second time step 2 and time is 0 0.03 and we can see inside this table all the values are showing so again for the step number 3 this is 0 0.045 0 0.045 step number 4 this is 0 0.06 step number 5 0 0.075 step number 6 0 0.09 step number 7 0 0.105 and for the step number 8 this is 0 0.12 now we can compare with this values of time after that corresponding to all these steps we need to insert the value of pressure okay so here in all the steps i will turn it off so we will change the settings later first let's apply the force so i will go to transient i will go to home pick and drag this click on reset layout after that i will insert the pressure inside this so go to insert and then click on pressure i want to apply the pressure onto this top face so click on face and select this top face 
and then click on apply after that i will insert the values here so go to pressure so initially the vis value is 0.2 so don't worry about this warning it is showing we will change these settings later so corresponding to this we need to insert all these values so this is 0 0.3 0 0.45 so this is 0 0.3 0 0.45 and 3.6 so here we can see sudden increase in pressure so this is 0.5 this is 3.6.25 this is 0.25 this is 0.15 this is 0.15 and this is 0.12 so hence all the values of force has been inserted and you can see from this graph so here i will go to this and click on hide and here you can see this graph of pressure with respect to time so here we can see how it is changing after that i will apply the boundary condition or the constraint so i will go to fixed support and i want to apply the support onto this face hold down the control key and select all these faces from bottom also select this face and then select this face click apply and then i want to i also want to apply the gravitational force so i will go to transient insert and then i will insert the acceleration into this now to insert the acceleration we need to insert this value 9810 and this will be in vertical downward so this will be in y so y is positive on the upward we need to specify this by component so this will be negative 9810 and unit is mm per meter square and i will apply to this complete body so all the boundary condition has been applied i will go to mesh right click and i will generate the mesh okay the mesh is good we can also reduce the element size depending on the number of nodes so i am taking all these default element size so i will go to this analysis settings here we need to specify a time step for this so let's say i will go to current step 1 auto timing i will turn it off because i don't want to solve this as a non-linear problem so the time step we need to define also we can define this by using the iteration so i will go to this on and i will specify this by sub steps so let's say initially sub step is 25 and then 10 this is 35 later on we can change these values similarly i will go to this step number two and we need to apply the apply the similar value to all the sub steps so do this one by one similarly for step number three select this as sub step so this is 25 10 and this is 35 step number four similarly apply this for the last step that is eight here i will specify this by sub step auto timing on and the number of sub step let's say this is 25 after that i will go to solution right click and then solve this so since this is a transient analysis it is going to take some time to solve this problem so after the solution is completed i will go to solution right click i am going to insert the total deformation and then i want the stress so go to equivalent stress and then right click evaluate all result 
so now i will go to total deformation and you can see how it is going to deform so if we go to the animation and let's say i will reduce this scale so go to result and i will reduce the scale because this is at very high scale if we take the true scale and let's under rotate this now animate this this is going to deform like this go to the stress value and you will get the value of stresses like this so maximum stress is 32 inside this problem and this is very much beyond the breaking point of steel that is 240 megapascal so the steel breaks more than stress of 240 megapascal and this is 32 it means we can say that this crankshaft is safe for the transient analysis.